Hello, uh, dear students. Uh, welcome back to our uh, discussion on air refrigeration system. Now, now, now let us discuss a uh, small uh, problem on uh, Bell Coleman cycle, which is also called as air refrigeration cycle or, or reversed dual cycle. So, here let us uh, read the question a refrigerating machine of 6 ton capacity working on Bell Coleman cycle has an upper pressure limit of 5.2 bar. The pressure and the temperature at the start of the compression are 1 bar and 16 degrees Celsius respectively. The compressed air which is cooled at a constant pressure enters the expansion cylinder at a temperature of 41 degrees Celsius. Assume both compression and expansion to be adiabatic with the gamma equals 1.4. We have to find 1 COP, 2 quantity of air in circulation per minute, 3 piston displacement of compressor and expander, then 4 bore of the compressor and the expansion cylinder. The unit runs at 240 rpm and is double acting. Take the stroke length as 200 millimeter and also CP value of the working fluid which is nothing but air it is given as 1.003 kilojoules per kilogram Kelvin. So, so the, this is the given question. So, let us uh, try to uh, first of all, what, what is our uh, first procedure? First of all, we will try to represent the given question on a meaningful PV or TS diagram that is on a meaningful thermodynamic diagram. So, for that, let us uh, uh, try to understand the question once more. So, again, once again, I am reading the question. A refrigerating machine of 6 ton capacity. Okay. So, it is having some capacity of 6 ton. Okay. So, what is the meaning of this uh, 6 ton capacity? So, 1 ton is the unit of refrigeration. So, here 6 ton capacity means 6 tons of refrigeration. Then this refrigerating machine is working on Bell Coleman cycle. So, Bell Coleman cycle is the uh, another term for air refrigeration cycle or reverse joule cycle. So, here we can straight away draw the PV diagram and TS diagram of the Bell Coleman cycle. Okay. So, this is the uh, PV diagram and TS diagram of the Bell Coleman cycle. We have already discussed the uh, when, when we discussed the derivation of the COP of uh, this cycle. Okay. So, we can uh, mark the PV diagram. So, 421 will be our constant pressure uh, heat absorption step, constant pressure heat absorption step, which is nothing but the refrigeration step. So, this will be the uh, 421 process in PV diagram. So, uh, this will be a constant pressure line. So, in the TS diagram also, we can mark the 421 uh, process on a constant pressure line like this. Then followed by 1 to 2, which is our uh, compression process. Uh, 1 to 2, okay. Then 1 to 2 will be the compression process shown in the TS diagram also. So, here what is uh, uh, given in the question? Uh, we can assume both compression and expansion to be adiabatic with the gamma equals 1.4. So, here we can uh, straight away assume the compression process as adiabatic. So, it will be a vertical line in the TS diagram. It will be a curve like this uh, in the PV diagram. Then followed by 2 to 3. It is our constant pressure heat rejection process. That is the heat absorbed during 4 to 1 plus the work done during compression. The uh, additional energy generated in the working fluid. It will be generated. It will be re rejected or released to the surroundings to constant pressure in this process 2 to 3. So, that is this constant pressure 
process 2 to 3 is represented on the TS diagram uh, like this 2 to 3. Then followed by the uh, adiabatic expansion process 3 to 4, which is shown in a curve like this in the PV diagram and in a vertical line like this because this is a adiabatic process is it will be a vertical line in a ts diagram then again we are continuing uh, reading the question it is working on a bell coleman cycle that is bell coleman cycle in the country diagrams okay so uh, that is the beauty of uh, reading the question uh, slowly and understanding it slowly by slowly then it has an upper pressure limit of 5.2 bar it has an upper pressure limit of 5.2 bar so again we can mark that 5.2 bar here so in the pv diagram uh, the, the cycle is having a lower pressure limit that is 421 uh, p4 and p1 will be the lower pressure limit and p2 and p3 will be the upper pressure limit so they are talking about the upper pressure limit that we can mark it as 5.2 bar again we are com coming back to our question the pressure and the temperature at the start of the compression are 1 bar and 16 degrees celsius respectively so they are talking about the pressure uh, at the start of the compression so it will be the lower pressure uh, in our uh, pv diagram so the lower pressure limit that is the PU, p1 or p4 will be one bar so they are talking about the pressure uh, at the start of the compression is one bar so how we can mark it uh, one to two is the compression process at the start of the compression means they are talking about p1 pressure at one pressure at one and four are same that will be one bar then uh, the temperature at the start of the compression is 16 degrees celsius okay so where we can mark that 16 degrees celsius at the start of the compression start of the compression means uh, 0.1 okay for one to two was our compression process so 0.1 will be the start of the compression so at the start of the compression the temperature of the uh, working fluid will be 16 degrees celsius okay then again we are reading the question the compressed air which is cooled at a constant pressure okay that is the already compressed air which is then cooled at a constant pressure it is going to enter the expand it, it is and it enters the expansion cylinder at a temperature of 41 degrees celsius okay so slowly read this line the compressed air that is the already compressed air which is then cooled at a constant pressure okay that is we, when we look at this uh, uh, pv diagram and ts diagram that is uh, the already compressed air that is the air which is coming out of two it is which is coming out of two here it is cooled at a constant pressure that is the by following the constant pressure line over here that is uh, during two to three that is from two to three the constant pressure line what they are saying the compressed air which is cooled at a constant pressure it is entering the expansion cylinder at a temperature of 41 degrees celsius okay so again coming back to our pv diagram and ts diagram it is going to enter the expansion cylinder the expansion process is from three to four the expansion process is three to four so it is going to enter the expansion cylinder at 41 degrees celsius means what is that the entry of the expansion cylinder is nothing but 0.3 so they are talking about the temperature at 3 or t3 will be nothing but 41 degree celsius so again coming back to our question assuming both compression and expansion to be adiabatic that we have already assumed that is why we have taken the uh, we have taken the uh, 1 to 2 and 2, 3 to 4 lines as vertical lines in TS diagram. Again, we are coming back to our question. We have to first of all find, we have to first of all find out COP of the system, COP of the refrigerator. Okay. 
so cop of the refrigerator we, we can try to find out how so we have already uh, learned in our uh, derivation of the cop that is when both compression 1 to 2 and the expansion 3 to 4 are assumed as isentropic or adiabatic we can safely write the cop term as t1 by t2 minus t1 there is no other botheration that is so it will be consisting only of t1 and t2 t1 and t2 okay t1 we already know it is 16 degree celsius t1 is nothing but 16 degree celsius but what about this t2 nothing is uh, mentioned about t2 in the question so we have to find out okay so how to find out this uh, t2 okay Point 0.2 is a portion of 1 to 2 line or the line 1 to 2 which is nothing but a isentropic process okay or adiabatic process okay so apply the adiabatic law or isentropic relation to 1 to 2 so we have already learned during the derivation t2 by t1 will be equal to p2 by p1 raised to gamma minus 1 by gamma so by substituting p2 and p1 as, as 5.2 divided by 1 5.2 divided by 1 and t1 is nothing but 16 degree celsius but take care we have to always uh, substitute the values in si units so 16 plus 273 multiplied by 5.2 divided by 1 raised to gamma minus 1 means 1.4 minus 1.4 by 1.4 is which will be equal to 462.88 kelvin so this will be the value of t2 so substituting the value of t2 and t1 in this uh, uh, numerator and denominator we can find out the value of cop like this okay so cop value will be coming as 1.66 so that so that is the first part of the question now the second part of the question we have to find out the quantity of air in circulation per minute so let us try to find that that one. so so please listen here in order to find the quantity of air in circulation per minute so here uh, we are talking about a bell polymer cycle or a, a air refrigeration system where the working fluid is nothing but air we have to find out the quantity of air uh, circulated in this refrigerator per minute so uh, when we are reading the uh, question uh, nothing else is uh, mentioned about this quantity of air or nothing uh, there is no other clue okay so again uh, when we look back uh, when we look back at the question there is a mention about a six ton capacity of this refrigerator okay six ton capacity means what does the what does that mean in in terms of a refrigerator it means 6 tr okay 1 tr is or 1 ton is the one unit of refrigeration okay or what does that mean tr means it is the refrigeration effect or produced by this refrigerator which is nothing but the heat absorbed from the cold chamber during four to one process it will be nothing but the heat absorbed from the cold chamber during 4 to 1 process so we have already marked um, uh, the, the ts diagram uh, and pv diagram like this so to 4 to 1 was our uh, refrigeration process or the heat getting extracted from the cold chamber that is nothing but uh, the refrigeration effect produced by the cycle by this uh, refrigeration machine here so uh, this refrigeration is uh, this refrigeration effect is nothing but uh, 6 tr that is given in the uh, question okay so how we can represent this heat absorbed uh, during this 4 to 1 process 4 to 1 process uh, was a constant pressure process 4 to 1 process is nothing but a uh, constant pressure process what does that mean uh, how we can mathematically represent uh, the heat absorbed during a constant pressure process that is nothing but mcp delta t that is nothing but mcp delta t mcp times t1 minus t4 which will be equal to six tons of refrigeration but what is one ton it will be 3.5 kilowatt or kilojoules per second so this will be equal to 
twenty one kilowatt. Okay, so here the this term comes M C P delta T. So what does this M represent? M is the mass of the air circulated, or the mass flow rate of the air. Then C P value is the C P value of uh, the air. Okay, then T one and T four we have already uh, we, we already know from our uh, T S diagram and uh, T S diagram. Okay, now. Uh, T1 we already know, but we do not know the value of T4. If the T4 value is also known, the CP value is directly given in the question. We can cross multiply and straight away find the value of M. But how to find out this T4? How to find out this value of T4? Our uh, our three to four is nothing but the isentropic process or adiabatic process. Okay, so here. Apply adiabatic expressions or isentropic relations to three to four. Okay, so by applying isentropic relations uh, to three to four. So uh, sorry, uh, here I am wrong. I have wrongly represented it as four to one, but it should be um, uh, three to four. So T four by T three will be equal to P four by P three raised to gamma minus one by gamma. P4 by P3 raised to gamma minus 1 by gamma. So T4 will be nothing but T3 times this relation. T3 is nothing but 41 degrees Celsius. Okay, so we have already marked that T3 is nothing but 41 degrees Celsius. So take that 41 degrees Celsius in SI units. T41 plus 273 times this uh, uh, fraction. So it will be 196.04 Kelvin. So straight away substituting this value of T4 here, that is in MCP delta T terms. So the heat absorbed, or the refrigeration effect produced during four to one process, will be mass m m m into Cp. Cp value it is already given in the question. It is already given in the question. Cp value is 1.003 kilojoules per kilogram Kelvin. So please take care of the units and don't forget to uh, don't uh, forget about these uh, units. Okay, so that they it will be very uh, very really helpful if you take care of the units. So 1.003 times T1 that is 16 plus 273 minus T4. T4 we have already found out. So this will be equal to that this whole expression. Will be equal to 21 kilowatt, but one kilowatt is uh, kilojoules per second. So by cross multiplying this uh, all other terms, we can find out the value of m or mass flow rate of air as 0.225 kilogram per second. So don't uh, go wrong. Uh, please don't take take care of the units. Uh, so if you if you car if you correctly substitute the units of all the uh, variables in this relation. You will not go wrong here also. So it, here we are finding out the answer in kilogram per second. But in our question, they told us to find out the uh, circulation uh, quantity of air in per minute. So we can convert this kilogram per second into kilogram per minute by multiplying it by sixty. So it will be three thirteen point five kilogram per minute. Okay. So again. Let's go back to our question. So we have found out the second part also. Then what is the what is the third part? What is the third part of the um, uh, question? We have to find out the piston displacement, the piston displacement of compressor and expander. We have to find out the uh, piston displacement of compressor and expander. So. Mm. What does that mean? Uh, uh, we have to find out the piston displacement of compressor and expander. So now let us uh, try to find that piston displacement of compressor. So we have we have already uh, drawn the PV diagram. Okay. So by observing this PV diagram, okay, four to one was our constant uh, pressure heat absorption. And one to two was our compression process. So now they are asking us to find the piston displacement of the 
compressor so uh, how this compressor will be working during the inlet stroke or the suction stroke of the compressor the compressor piston will be moving from a, a one dead center towards the uh, uh, towards the other dead center by moving it through one okay by uh, expand uh, by by allowing the volume inside the combustion cylinder to reach v1 so during the uh, piston displacement of the compressor means the piston displacement of the compressor means what is the maximum displacement or what is the maximum distance through which the piston or the compressor has moved okay so during this uh, compression process 1 to 2 the maximum distance through which the uh, uh, the piston of the compressor has moved is from a uh, from the uh, top dead center uh, say uh, somewhere here towards the bottom dead center at one so it is nothing but this piston displacement of the compressor is nothing but v1 <coughs> okay v1 is a volume term but <coughs> it is uh, simply meaning by uh, what, what is the meaning of this v1 v1 is nothing but the volume swept by the piston uh, when when it is undergoing a maximum displacement so um, so when they are talking about a piston displacement they are indirectly asking us to find out the volume uh, the swept volume uh, <coughs> the uh, compressor piston so they are asking us to find out the value of v1 okay so how to find out the value of v1 we can simply use the ideal gas relation v1 v1 is nothing but mr t1 v1 v1 is equal to mr t1 so v1 will be nothing but mr t1 by p1 p1 is nothing but uh, we have already uh, found out it is 1 bar so one bar uh, bar is not a si unit so uh, one bar is nothing but 10 to 10 to 5 newton per million newton per meter square so 1 into 10 to 5 will be the value uh, here okay then m m means the mass flow rate of the uh, uh, the air which we have already found out it is 13.5 then r what is the value of r r is the characteristic gas constant of air so how we can find out the r we have already we already studied in our junior classes that is r is equal to cp minus cv okay cv value we can all we can write it like this cp by gamma gamma value is given in the question cp value is also given in the question so by substituting cp and gamma here we can find out the value of r that is nothing but 0.286 kJ per kg kelvin by substituting this value of r Uh, here then t1 t1 is nothing but 16 degree celsius so converting it into si unit that is plus 273 and uh, uh, taking care of the units so this is in kilojoules that is 0.286 so we have to multiply it by 10 to 3 here so the final value of v1 will be coming around 11.15 or 11.2 uh, meter cube per minute okay same way similarly for expander the piston displacement of the expander will be v4 that is uh, what is the maximum displacement of the piston in an expander cylinder in our expander cylinder is working from 3 to 4 so what is the maximum displacement uh, experienced by the piston of an expander that is v4 okay v4 so v4 will be nothing but mr t4 by p4 substituting all the values required values v4 will be nothing but 7.56 meter cube per minute 7.56 meter cube per minute then now let us uh, come back to our question so we have found out the values of piston displacement of compressor and expander now what is remaining the fourth part of the question is we have to find out the bore of the compression and the expander expander cylinder okay so the unit is running at 240 rpm and is double acting okay then the stroke length uh, we can take it as 
200 millimeter. What is the meaning of the stroke length? What is the length through which the piston of a uh, cylinder is moving when it is undergoing one particular stroke? Okay, so there may be one uh, expansion stroke, there may be one uh, compression stroke, there may be one inlet stroke or a uh, delivery stroke like that, like that. Okay, so considering a piston cylinder arrangement, the total length through which the uh, piston is moving through one stroke is nothing but the stroke length. They are taking, a, they are telling us that the stroke length is 200 millimeter or 20 centimeter. So let us uh, come back uh, to our discussion. So in, we are now we are trying to find out the bore or what is the meaning of this uh, term bore? We have to find out the diameter, diameter of the compressor cylinder. So let us first of all find the bore of the compressor cylinder. So what is the meaning? So now we are focusing only on our compressor cylinder. So in the last step we found that this total volume of the air displaced in one minute is v1 equals 11.15 meter cube per minute what does this mean this is the volume of air displaced by the piston of the compressor cylinder in one minute okay so now let us uh, try to uh, understand the uh, working of a piston cylinder arrangement so now let us diagrammatically uh, roughly represent a uh, piston cylinder arrangement like this. So this will be the uh, uh, bore or the uh, a cylinder shown over here. This will be the piston moving inside the uh, cylinder, uh, uh, cylinder that was inside space of the cylinder, uh, inside the cylinder liner. Okay, to which the the piston uh, the will be attached to a connecting rod. This connecting rod will be attached to a crank. This crank will be connected to a crankshaft uh, which will be rotating at a particular RPM. So here in this uh, uh, question, they are telling that the unit is running at 240 RPM, which means this crankshaft is rotating at 240 RPM. So here, this, this will be the uh, inner diameter uh, or D. D is nothing but the diameter or bore of the compressor. So here we are now dealing with a compressor cylinder only. Now we will be coming back to our expander cylinder later. Now we are focusing only on the compressor cylinder. D is the compressor uh, cylinder diameter. L is the stroke length. Length, uh, sorry, the distance through which the uh, piston uh, will be moving through one stroke. Okay. So now let us uh, understand the given data. 240 RPM. The crankshaft is rotating at 240 RPM, means 240 revolutions of the crank per minute. What does that mean? In one minute, there will be 240 revolutions of the crank. There will be 240 revolutions of the crank. So, what does that mean? If we cross multiply, so one revolution of the crank will take 1 by 240 of a minute, which is a very less quantity is a very less time okay 1 by 240 of a minute but what is the physical meaning of this sentence normally in one revolution of the crank there will be one compression stroke of the piston okay so if you are if we consider a simple piston cylinder arrangement like this when the crank is completing one full revolution what does that mean this piston will be undergoing one full compression stroke okay uh, that will be the normal case but what is happening here but here in the question they are saying the piston is double acting the piston is double acting so what does that mean so here in one revolution of the crank there will be two compression strokes of the piston so that is what we have to take care here so here in one revolution of the crank there will be two compression strokes so in one revolution of the crank means uh, it will be one, 1 by 240 minutes it will be taking 1 by 240 minutes but this 1 by 240 in this 1 by 240 minutes there will be two compression strokes of the piston because it is double acting okay so uh, therefore uh, the time required for one compression stroke of this piston that is here in this question will be 
1 by 240 again divided by 2. So 1 by 240 into 2 minutes. Okay. So this one compression stroke of the piston will be equal to what is the volume swept by the piston or uh, during one compression stroke of the piston, the piston will be displacing a volume of pi by 4 d, d square l meter cube of air. That is during one compression stroke of the piston, the piston will be displacing a volume of pi by 4 d square l. So if you are if you are getting confused with this pi by 4 d square l, pi by 4 d square is the cross sectional area of the uh, piston, pi by 4 d square times length or the height of the cylinder will give you the stroke volume, the volume swept by the piston during one stroke or during the combustion stroke that is nothing but the pi by 4 d square l, pi by 4 d square l. So, uh, in uh, during one compression stroke of the piston, pi by 4 d square l will be the volume swept uh, by the uh, piston inside the compressor cylinder. But how much time will be required for this uh, pi by 4 d square l uh, volume? It will be 1 by 2 by 1 by 240 into 2 minutes. Okay. But we already know uh, in 1 minute. The, it, the piston is going to displace about 11.29 uh, or 11.15. Uh, here we are assuming that is 11.29 meter cube. Okay. 11.29 meter cube uh, is swept by the piston during one minute. But what is the what is what is the total volume displaced in this one minute? That will be in, that will be equal to 240 into two into pi by 4 d square l. How that came? That is uh, 1 by 240 into 2 uh, minutes will be required for pi by 4 d square l volume. But what is what will be the uh, volume swept during this 1 minute? We can cross multiply this 240 into 2 times pi by 4 d square l. So, 11.29 uh, meter cube will be swept in 240 uh, that is 11.29 meter, uh, meter cube will be swept uh, during one minute, which will be uh, displacing a, a total volume of 240 into 2 pi by 4 d square l. So, we can equate this 11.29 with 240 into 2 pi by 4 d square into l. L is nothing but 200 millimeter that is given in the question. So, millimeter comes here 10 raised to minus 3. So, by solving this question, the only variable here is uh, d square here. By solving this uh, uh, relation, we can find the value of uh, d as 0.386 meter or it will be somewhat the, the 386 millimeter or 38.6 centimeter. So, this will be the compressor bore. Similarly, to find the expander bore, it will be as follows here. V4, V4 is nothing but 7.56 meter cube per minute. Okay, so the same way that we calculated calculated the diameter of the uh, compressor, we can calculate the expander bore. 7.56 will be equal to 240 into 2 times pi by 4 d square L. So D will be nothing but 316 millimeter or 0.316 meter for expander. Okay, so. I, uh, so I hope you have understood the uh, problem. So please uh, uh, practice uh, it by writing it down and uh, uh, you have to thoroughly practice this uh, question. Okay, thank you. So thank you all.